Dustin Dolby here, what's happening? Welcome back to just another terrific episode of Workflow. If you like learning about product photography by somebody with a mullet, make sure to subscribe. Today we're gonna to tackle white background product photography and we're gonna essentially recreate this Amazon listing start to finish just using inexpensive gear and speed lights. And it doesn't take a lot, one or two lights to get things looking professional and really crisp for your Amazon or your Etsy e-commerce listing. So since we're shooting a smaller product and it is translucent, light can pass through it, we have it here on a small acrylic shooting table. That'll help isolate it and help the table not affect it at all, which is important. It is a translucent item. If it was opaque, it's even easier. Either way, I'm probably gonna approach them a similar way by bringing out a roll of Savage Translume plastic this is. You could bring out a diffuser or you could bring out something cheaper, but this is a really good quality diffusion material. And the reason I like using that instead of the white wall is because you have to light against a white wall to illuminate it, which often turns into a 45 degree double light battle. But if you have a shoot through diffusion, as the name suggests, you can shoot through it. So I'm just turning on my speed light here inside of our eight by 36 inch strip box. And I'm angling it dead ahead. So we can put it right behind our product, which we couldn't do if we were bouncing it this way because it'd be in the way. We can shoot right through. Not only is that more efficient, but it's gonna improve the character of our product, which happens to be a water bottle. So water bottles, obviously you can see through them. So anything that glows in the background here is going to glow inside of our water bottle. Now it's a little off center. A nice thing about a small shooting surface also is you can just rotate the surface and it's pretty subtle. So I'm just using the brand name there to center it up, but you see the acrylic tables allowing nothing to be affected there's no table reflecting inside of this. It's just so clean. So if I get this on an Amazon page, it's gonna be really crisp and simple. One small tweak I might do differently if I'm shooting for an opaque product, I don't have to worry about a glow in the background so I can create more distance. I'm gonna back up this strip box just to show you about a foot. And even a little difference like that will make the highlight much flatter. You get less of a hot spot. And that's because we backed it up, right? So it's not as hot like we're pushing it right against the diffusion here. And my point is you could scale up this brightness, brighter, 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 brighter with something flat like that. And you'd end up in a nice area in the middle where you have a nice white background because you don't care about the product looking flat internally if it's opaque because you don't see it. But we do see it. So I want something hotter in the background and I bring up my strip box quite close to the diffusion. So let's bring this nice and tight. I can also almost touch the strip box to the diffuser, which is pretty wild, but it still creates you know, a nice glow, something like this. And when it ends up on an actual pure white background, it's going to be very bright. So you don't want this to pale in comparison, which is why I'm going so bright, like almost whitely bright in the middle. But that's a nice backlight. I mean, I said it's only gonna be one or two lights. And if you look at this, I mean, this is just one light and we've already solved so many of the problems. We just need to bring in something from the front to complement the other materials that aren't gonna be solved so simply by a backlight. So I'm gonna turn on a second speed light here, a YN 563. These are really inexpensive. And first maybe just unmodified, just the strip light by itself, pardon me, the speed light. We'll kind of illustrate what we're looking to do. We don't care much about bleeding light onto the background. We just care about having this look nice. Now the light's a little specular. I mean, it's reflecting directly in here, which is otherwise matte but for just a bare speed light, I have to say it's not horrible. What is horrible are some of the reflections happening through here. And that could just be a case of us having to move around the light a little. Look at how good the brand name looks. That was pretty quick, right? So we just wanna put the lights in a nicer place, maybe modify them a bit to get this cap looking a little smoother. We don't want to lose its luster here with the harsh light. And then this inner tube, we have to solve this. Maybe we can solve them with one light. We'll probably solve them with two lights. So if you want something less harsh, I mentioned a speed light is pretty harsh, use a white ceiling. If you have a white ceiling above you, just look up. It's pretty much the most expensive softbox you own because you can just shoot one speed light into it and the size of that ceiling pretty much becomes a softbox. It can be a little duller, but if we look at the quality of the light on the actual lid, it's, it's less like oily and harsh looking. Does that make sense? The specularity went down, it's kind of smooth. You kind of actually get a more true depiction of the material. And this kind of diagonal 
pattern is actually coming out even more like this. One thing I like to look out for when I light off the ceiling is the light is very downward. So if we look at our exposure, you'll notice the face is a little darker than it is here because the light is coming top down and lighting this ridge up here more so than the face. That can be solved in editing, but there is something to say for having more of a punch of light coming from the front, which is why sometimes I'll use these little diffusers. When I use these, I like to put my camera on a two second remote. So let me adjust this quickly. A two second remote will just give you the time you need to lift everything in the air and essentially create a soft box with these two items. So I'm just gonna slam dunk it from the front kind of, trying to get out of the way. And hopefully that'll give me something a little more directional than what we just had a second ago. Okay, our backlight failed here, but that's okay, we still get an idea. And you can see, even without the backlight, the punch from the front looks way more intense. And also I'm not at full power when I'm shooting off my speed light from the front typically. So I'll have some more room to adjust the power. Whereas when I go off the ceiling, I'm exhausting full power. So I like something like this. And even in the buckles, the material finish is looking nice. I would like to light the tube a little cleaner and avoid this highlight if I could. Usually if I'm compositing, I'll take advantage of lighting the product from a lot of different angles to get different results of the different materials. Like this side lit looks much cleaner than from the front because we're not having to battle with that highlight. So for capturing this filter in front of the product, I want it to look as clean as possible. So we're going to actually separate them. And that's no problem if you're comfortable in Photoshop, just to get the cleanest result possible without any you know, arbitrary highlights from the other product. I love a good clean look. And to get a consistent look, I'm going to try to use the same softbox approach as before that I just did with the cap. I'm going to go kind of from an upper 45 degree angle, and hopefully that'll give us a clean result with the rest of our shots. The reason I leave it at this scale is just what so matches up completely and there's no scale issues. I know the resolution's low, but it's subject to the size of the other product shots anyway, so it's perfect to capture just like this. So I'll grab this and I'll grab the other frames we captured and I'll meet you guys in Photoshop and show you how to throw these together lickety split. A quick thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's workflow. I'm on Skillshare, so for anyone looking to expand their creativity or skill set, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. If you're a member on Skillshare, you'll get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and a feedback from a community of millions. If you're not sure where to start, Fundamentals of DSLR Photography by Justin Bridges is a Skillshare original and great place to get your feet wet. It's curated specifically for learning, so there's no ads, I like that. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow your creativity wherever it takes you. Thanks Skillshare, now let's hop into Photoshop. All right guys, here we are inside of Photoshop and I just stacked things vertically. File, scripts, load files into stack. Really quick way to do it. And we're on a white background. Now if I have multiple accessory exposures, I'm gonna stack them also. If I just have one exposure, that's great too, but I wanna make sure I'm on a flat white background. And we could have lit this for a white background. We kind of did around the perimeter and make a really crude selection or we can make a selection manually. I'm gonna go ahead, even though we're flirting with being on white here, I'm gonna make an airtight selection just because it has other benefits as well. You could use the magnetic lasso tool, especially if you're on a quasi white background, it'll have strong contrast and pick it up really quickly. Or you could just invest five minutes and get a really airtight selection with the polygonal lasso tool. And the more polygonal, the better. And just try to make as many nodes as you can and get a good airtight shape around your product. Or you could outsource this as well. I've pre-made our selection. I'll just grab it quickly here just to avoid the five minutes of me having to do that manually on screen. So once I have a selection that's nice like that, it applies to everything because they're all stacked vertically. So let's group these three products. Control G. And let's hit this button down here to create a layer mask with that selection present. That'll confine everything in this grouping to the shape of the layer mask. This is super useful for compositing and stacking and it just is a great efficient way to work. Now this bottle, this base frame is gonna be, you know, it's gonna comprise most of our image. It's a beautiful soft lighting and everything that's silhouetted, I just wanna bring in from the other exposures cause they have, you know, more flattering aspects to them. The lid should be super easy to bring in. I'm literally just gonna paint it in. So how I will achieve that is create a black mask omitting the image and how you can do that quickly is hit this button while holding Alt and then I'll create a black mask and then hit B to bring out your brush. I'm gonna get a white brush in my foreground 
and I'm just going to bring in all that detail we want to complement our backlighting exposure. And it looks pretty surreal seeing it come in. And I'll get a smaller brush as we transition here at the bottom. Holding shift, you can get a straight line. And I'll just brush that in nice and straight. And it's like a light switch turned on. It's just great. And you notice we don't have the under light from the previous exposure, so it got a little crisper. And I'm happy with that change. Now we also want to bring in the tube here. And how I might do that is with another layer mask. So I'll hold Alt and click the layer mask to make it invisible. And then hitting B to bring up my brush, I mean, I could paint it in kind of crudely because it matches the background kind of, but not totally. So I'll make a smaller brush. And again, clicking and holding Shift to draw state straight lines, I'll just kind of paint it in manually. That way, if I see anything too ugly, I can hit the break. And I'm just holding Shift, clicking all the way down here. You notice the logo is being lit up at the bottom. That's a nice you know, Easter egg, but we're going to light that up confidently in a moment. And okay, I think we have most of this done. Yeah, you see there's some light bleed at the side, so I'm going to try to hold X to get the black in the foreground, which will omit the layer. And just to be safe, I'm holding Shift and just omitting it up the side there, which also created a nice little shadow on the side, but that's a good exposure. So no one would really know that's composited together. But now everything's kind of looking its best and we can start working on things like the text and you know other areas of the image. Now to improve this text down here and make it fully legible, you'll notice in our lid frame, if I duplicate it, control J, I'm gonna delete its layer mask, you'll notice it was quite contrasting. It was on a pretty stark background. So we can pretty much use that to our advantage. We can put it on lighten mode which you see makes it show up and it's slightly misaligned. So I'm going to zoom in and with my arrow keys on my arrow board, my arrow board, my keyboard, I'm just going to tuck it in there. Like it's going to go to bed, but you see how good light mode is and just bringing that in there, which can be super useful and just cut through immediately. No Photoshop work required outside of just changing the blending mode. Sometimes to clean up the edges of my product, there's a bit of lines and reflections from things in the room. If I'm within a layer mask like this, I will make a new layer in that grouping and grab with the eyedropper tool, one of the colors around the perimeter, like this rich navy, and I'll get out my brush. And instead of allowing these just sort of oddities to happen, I'll paint over the edge of the product with a small brush and I'll hold shift and just go up the side of the product. And that'll just have a really chill simplifying effect where it's a little easier on the eyes, less aliasing, it sits better on the page. And it's just super simple to do that. And it also saturates the edges of the product nicely. It just leaves you with really clean lines. Typically, if I'm within a layer mask anyway, I'm going to be applying a slight amount of feather just to help it sit better naturally anyway. So a quick glance over our image, and I think the brand name being brighter could definitely benefit us here. And you know, that's the nice thing about compositing is you can make that choice. So I just did a curves layer above this, hold alt and clipped them. So now it's only affecting the underlying layer. And I'm just gonna curve up the curve and make it a little brighter. I don't like the spill. So I'm gonna go to the mask, hit B, bring up my black brush and just make sure we're brushing any excess light away. But I wanna make sure the brand name is respected. Maybe that's a little heavy, but it's nice to be able to adjust that now, lastly, we need to composite in our filter next to this, which should be pretty easy. I have the filter frame here and I'm going to make the selection ahead of time, which I already did. And that couldn't be easier with a layer mask. And I just want to bring this in in front of our product. So it's going to be really simple. Now there's this weird layer artifact happening in our layer mask. So I'll just grab that really quick and I will paste black into that layer mask. Not sure why that showed up. But let's stack this above our grouping and just compose this. I mean, we can put it anywhere we want now as long as it makes sense. We just want to group it with this on either side. And then maybe just adding a shadow to the both of them could kind of be a nice addition. What do you think? Just to make it sit a little cleaner. And then we also want to give the feather to this grouping. Anything that's dependent on a selection you want to match, ideally their feather. I find usually between 0.4 and 0.8 pixels looks pretty good depending on the resolution of your camera. Now to make an easy shadow beneath these, I'm going to beneath these groups, make a new layer and I'm going to bring black into my foreground, hit G to bring up my gradient tool. We're going for a radial foreground to transparent gradient, something like this. Then I'll hit control T 
and I'm just going to shrink it vertically. This is going to be the shadow for our bottle. And I'm just gonna size it appropriately here. And I'm not gonna show a ton of shadow. I just literally wanna have a little hint of something so it sits better on the page. Something subtle like that is cool. And maybe I could even duplicate this and use it again. Make it extra small. And using your arrow keys is way more comfortable, I find, than doing other things at times. And sometimes it can be tricky to make the shadow subtle enough to the point where you're just looking at the image and it kind of helps them breathe a little bit. And just make it nice for anyone who might be searching for it in e-commerce marketplace. My name is Dustin Dolby and free product photography tutorials are all we do here. So make sure to subscribe and follow us around the internet on Instagram. If you want to pick up one of these acrylic shooting tables, we make them here. I'll link them below and you can learn more about that in the description. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Leave me a comment below. I'll read it. Until then, ciao.